eat this shit up. Compared to other neighborhoods like Third Ward, South Park, Fifth Ward, and Acres Homes, to name a few, the southwest side of Houston is relatively new in regards to rich history. There's none for the most part in comparison to the others. As a whole, it was predominantly a working middle class neighborhood. In the 90s is when Houston's southwest side really started to be recognized as the hood, with different hoods inside. It wasn't until the emergence of Youngster and Lil O did the West have legitimate representation in rap and later followed Trade of Truth. They made it quote unquote cool to be from the Southwest. The same couldn't be said for A-Leaf. In the 80s and even the early 90s, A-Leaf was depicted as a suburb, although also a working middle class of Houston. A lot of black families from other neighborhoods on the South Side and Houston abroad went there to get a fresh start and raise their children in better neighborhoods as a result from forms of urban decay, which created some of the first generation black A-Leaf residents. In turn, A-Leaf became its own hood, a melting pot of these different neighborhoods. A-Leaf never had anyone put them on a the map in hip hop until now. Maxo Cream is one of several artists from that early generation to create an A-Leaf wave. Maxo spearheaded that wave and the depiction of his life paint a picture for those who have never been to those parts. What's my head open, play fighting with a steel chair. Trying to be a wrestler, almost put me in a wheelchair. Thankful for that Medicare, welfare, hell Remember kill. roaches in my ashtray and roaches in my cereal. Apple City is a lot different from what it was in the 80s. Wikipedia says its motto is, the friendliest, most diverse city in Houston. Diverse? Yeah. Friendly? I don't think so. Nigerians in Southwest Houston are a force, through white collar crimes and in the streets. And that's part of who Maxo is. Setting up traps and lending out packs. Still hand chop a Maxo, four five gats. Getting paid off raps, but still toe strap. But I still ride the plug, he better not tap. If you listen to his music, you can get more than drugs, guns, and violence. Young listeners should take from his music as lessons from someone who has experienced it. Born to an African-American mother and Nigerian father, he sees things from both sides of the spectrum. And through his music, you can hear that he's lived through both sides. From before Maxo 187, the persona tape, through Pumpkin, and up to Brandon Banks. Although at 12, his Nigerian father was arrested for fraud, and he didn't really indulge in his father's side of the family. The Nigerians from around the way acknowledged him as one of their own, to a certain degree. He grew up more attached to his mother's side of the family. But what's most interesting about Maxo's music is how deep he details life in A-League, like never before. Robbing niggas in, boo, give me that. Ask about me and you. Fight in the club parking lot, we gon' shoot it. Oh, your bitch call me, he need to come check it. Come check it. Start kicking like loud for ticket. Pit ball the hole and I serve out the west end. Get off the track, what the fuck is the back end? Uh -huh. The Houston press called him the personification of the trap. Maxo represents A-Leaf in his darkest light, but it's reality, like it or not. A five dudes who perform Park Crip, leader of the cream clip gang. He opens the eyes of those who think A-Leaf is still the suburb that it was decades ago. And in reality, he is a product of the transformation to present day urban decay in those same apartment complexes that were once beautiful and families flocked to for cost efficiency reasons as well as peace. I just had to step out the streets. That's, that's the only thing it was. Like, my street life was too real. Right? Everything I rap about authentic, so it was too real. You feel me? Right. So I just really had to separate myself for that. You know, when I did, I just moved to LA, get up out of Houston. I'm from Houston, you know what I'm saying? It's like, Houston, like the kind of city is, you can get away from it, but you step out, you go somewhere. Like, you don't necessarily gotta be in the streets. You go to the club, depends on what club you go to, you in the streets. Right. Cause the streets in the club, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So I just had to separate myself, get away, so I can you know what I'm saying, focus. Maxo Cream has made headlines over the years from his A-League lifestyle. Charlemagne even gave him and another Houston rapper Donkey of the Day for a video to spawn the arrest of 20 men. Because of the Maxo Cream and NFL cartel, both 20 men are now facing gun charges because for whatever reason, people have not realized that what you do online can directly impact your life offline. Maxo Cream and NFL Cartel Bo. 
used a city park next to an elementary school to shoot a music video. It included about two dozen members of a Houston street gang as extras waving loaded guns at the camera. The Houston-based rapper you see was just arrested, accused of money laundering, delivering marijuana, and organized crime. News and blogs can attach a negative narrative to the type of citizen he is. He is a product of his environment. True enough, you can hear jaw-dropping tales in his music, but as an artist that is a little bit older than some of the younger wave, he has the credibility to be called an OG. He paid his dues, and they're well publicized in the streets and on the 9 o'clock news. Not made up. Not only did Maxo put A-Leaf on the map, he is the epitome of the side streets in A-Leaf. Since then, he has gotten a second chance in his life to remove himself from the past and use it as a stepping stone into the next chapter of his life. He can have reported $1.5 million deal with RCA Records and management deal with Rock Nation to roll out Brandon Bates. But thanks to Max O, Alif is on the map. Eat this shit up.